Welcome to Vivid Vibes Podcast, where we discuss information for your soul's vibration. I'm Laura. And I'm Jada. And today I will be interviewing Laura about past life regressions. Uh, we, yeah, we did a poll on the Vivid Vibes tribe to see which topic people would like um, a workshop on and the most votes were for past life regression so we decided to just go ahead and do a full-on episode on it and we will still do a workshop and that will be within the vivid vibes tribe on facebook so if you're not already in there go ahead and become a part of that group so you can be a part of the workshop so hi laura hi jada <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Sweet. So the first thing that we ask all of our guests on the podcast is what do you do to raise your soul's vibration? So not just anybody, what what do you specifically do to raise your soul's vibration? I think for me specifically, some of my favorite things, of course, are art related because I'm an artist. I've always been an artist. Um, so I'll sit down and paint or draw or make jewelry. Um, I'll do any of those things because anytime I'm doing that, I feel like it's a focused outlet for my personal energy to create. And in that form of creation, it feels very uplifting. It's raising my energy levels. And even aside from that, of course, I get into meditations or, um, anytime I, watch a few YouTube videos from spiritual teachers or follow meditations, anything like that. Finding myself in search of higher knowledge, that automatically kind of just does it for me and gets my uh, vibrations higher. That's what I easily can do versus other things just become more of a (laughs) <laughs> more uh, of a challenge to focus and get things elevated. But, you know, there's so many techniques out there and different things you can do to raise your vibration. But the top ones for me are art and spiritual pursuits. Nice. And you recently have been like exercising too. Right? Yes. Consistently. Thank God. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, that was because of an EFT block that we kind of worked together to remove. And maybe we could talk about that on another episode. Yeah. But, but that was awesome. So thank you for that, Jade. For yes, that there, of there. course. Yeah. Absolutely. That was also just you realizing stuff. And then we just worked together to release it. Yeah. Um, So speaking of realizing stuff and then working together to release it, (laughs) (laughs) you you also have helped me do that through past life regression. I did a session with you once and I've been thinking about it and I'm like, man, I want to do another one. Um, So (laughs) what is past life regression? All right. Well, past life regression. Um, I'm going to try to simplify this as easy you as you can. Possible. Honestly, you can like go into detail with it. It's fine. Okay. We have an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, to start, um, past life regression is simply going back into your subconscious mind to recall past lives you have lived or the memory of past lives. Um, so beyond that's like the simplest version I can give of that to start with, but it does definitely go far more in depth because that seem that sounds oversimplified in a little bit, because I know there's so many people out there that say like, yeah, whatever you see past lives. What does that actually mean? Um, because for the, I did not grow up believing in past lives. That was not a part of my belief system for so long. I even in my teen years, I would do ghost hunting and I was on a a paranormal group uh, and I believed in ghosts and paranormal activity, but that seemed contradictory to the idea of past lives. I'm like, how do ghosts exist? And how, if there are, if people can reincarnate, what, what the hell does all that mean? So it took a long time for me to even come around to the idea of past lives being legitimate. 
And what did it for me is when my I was in my early 20s and I got an opportunity to as an artist to work with this hypnotist, uh, Patricia McGivern. And she's been doing her hypnosis work since the last, uh, uh, since the late nineties. And she is amazing. She's such a kind soul and she's a wealth of information. And she was talking about it all, the whole past lives and everything with me when I got to work with her. And in the beginning, I was so skeptical. I'm like, uh, I still, wait, that's what you're into. Okay, whatever. I'm just here to do the art. But eventually she did publish uh, her second book, which had artwork that I did in the book. So I'm like, all right, I got to read the book. I'm in it. So I finally did. And then in her book, she was discussing all of these. uh, They were basically transcripts from sessions, of course, published with permission, but from these uh, sessions she's done over the years and It was going in depth to how they got into this relaxed state, what she was saying to them and what they were imagining and them talking and responding to her about what they're seeing, imagining, sensing or feeling. And when they described it all, it's basically her writing it down and putting it into the book. It's like, this is what people are doing when they're in a hypnosis session. Oh, my gosh, this isn't terrifying. This isn't contradictory to anything I know it made sense because simply the people are getting so relaxed that they are now able to dive in to the subconscious mind deep enough to uncover these memories and when I uh when I finished the book I was like all right I gotta I gotta do this I gotta get into this because this is just like this seems too good to be true this is amazing though I want in so I contacted Patty like almost right away And I'm like, I got to book a session with you after reading this book. It was amazing. And I did that. I did my first two hour session with her and I got to see two past lives. And afterwards I was just blown away because it, there was nothing scary to it. It seemed so natural. It seemed so comfortable and familiar. And it occurred to me afterwards, it was like, all you are doing is remembering You're just remembering things that you have forgotten. They never went away, but it's just memories. It feels as natural as just remembering anything. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you talk about how you were once a skeptic about it and now you're like all about it and that this is actually (laughs) like your niche with your hypnosis now. (laughs) Um, Because the first time I heard about it, I've been into, you know, yoga, meditation, crystals, all that good stuff for a while now. And when I was, um, when I was, I actually used to be a nail technician and one of my nail clients, I was like, I felt like a therapist when I was a nail technician (laughs) because I had these girls who would come see me every two weeks and we would have these deep conversations and they would tell me about their relationships and they would tell me about stuff that was going on in their lives. Like nail techs are like therapists, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So this girl was telling me about this past life regression she did and I just thought it was so cool and like so interesting and I never had really thought about past lives because I was raised in a Christian household so I was just starting to get to know about um to get to know about karma and so the concept of past lives really made sense to me because of karmic cycles and all of that. So when I did my past life regression with you, there was still some part of my brain that said, well, what if you're just making this up? You know, what if you're just saying like, what if you're just creating these scenarios in your mind and, uh, And it's just making things make sense for you. And I thought about it after because the ego does like to do that. The ego likes to make sense of things. It likes to overcomplicate things. Yeah. And I thought about that after. And then I realized even if it was that, then that would be okay 
because it's on an individual basis, the significance that we each give it. But to me personally, the amount of detail that showed up in our past life regression and the people who showed up and the way that things made sense, like whether that's this like ancient knowledge or it's like something first of all if my subconscious mind created that holy shit like it really <laughs> thought of the details but yeah but i do believe that that it's uh some kind of you know soul knowledge that we carry with us but i feel like i also just need to clarify whenever i say i grew up in a christian household i am a spiritual person now but um i don't still quite identify with those beliefs because it just doesn't make sense to me that our souls would just go somewhere and then stay there. I I do feel now like things kind of just keep recycling, but I also believe we're all having our own experience here and uh, everybody's entitled to their experience because that's Mm -hmm. the cool thing about being human. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're going to get into some deep waters in this episode. Like, Oh my gosh, there's so much I'm already just going through my <laughs> mind that we're that I want us to touch base on. Um, yeah, this is going to be a very complicated or deep subject simply because there's so much of that. Everybody individually is having to figure out what it is they believe if they are not uh, concretely stuck in one way of thinking and trying right. to make sense of it all. And I hope that as we continue on to this, like I can touch on on a lot of different questions that a lot of people might have. Yeah. So how can how can past life regressions help you raise your soul's vibration? By knowing what you didn't know before. Simply when we open up a door and discover things that we didn't know existed prior to us opening that door. Now your whole world has changed and not for in a, in a detrimental way in no means that it's now you are gaining knowledge, you are gaining information and that allows you to understand yourself on a deeper level to be more insightful and then be more in control of why you do what you do and the reasons behind what you do versus being a person that just does things without um, understanding the repercussions. Right, because, like someone who's an autopilot. Yeah, because, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if someone comes to this earth to be in that modality, I just, I strongly believe that everybody chooses to come into this life to experience what they experience one way or the other. There is no wrong experience. But when a person chooses to go down the the road and open up the doors to past life regressions, they are now choosing to expand upon what they already know and go beyond that. And that's growth. And when you're growing, that is a sign of raising your energetic vibration. You are expanding. You are going further. And that is just, ah, it's this release because now you aren't feeling stuck because patterns can repeat over and over again. And that leads Mm -hmm. to the feeling of being stuck or trapped. So I think that's kind of what may just begin to tap into that and help people raise their frequencies. Totally. Whenever we did our past life regression, I think our listeners have have probably gathered by now that I'm an open book and I (laughs) I don't (laughs) feel the need to hide any of my experiences or anything like that. Um, But whenever we did uh, my past life regression, I saw myself in a past life where I was royalty and my father was trying to marry me off and it made sense to me why I was kind of a serial monogamist uh, or why I have been in the past in this lifetime (laughs) 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 because I had this idea in my head that wasn't even from 
necessarily this lifetime. Mm-hmm. And it was that I needed a man to to like validate me or complete me or keep me safe. That was the ultimate thought like the thought was that I for the longest time I felt like I couldn't travel anywhere because I needed a man to keep me safe I needed a man to travel with me and then you know I in this lifetime went to India by myself and met up with my class and totally blew the lid off that belief but Mm -hmm. (laughs) but when I saw that past life it made something click in me something that I didn't realize without seeing that and that was that I really it was really ingrained into me that like a man completes you a man is like the is like an accomplishment to be with somebody and you need to be with somebody and seeing that and realizing that brought me so much peace now because I realized that was conditioning from god like I was dressed like in that past life, I was dressed like it was like, uh, uh, what's her name? Marie Antoinette, right? Yeah, like Marie Antoinette times, like that long ago. Like that's yeah. how deep that shit was ingrained in me. And that wasn't the first time in a past life that I'd seen a pattern like that. There was also a time where I saw, um, where I was like in a tribe. I was like in a tribal setting in Africa. And for the record, you don't look like you do now in your past lives. You're in a different like. You're in that incarnation body. (laughs) Yeah. I like pinched my face when I said that. I'm like, what do I call this thing? Um, (laughs) Meat suit was the first thing that came to my mind. Um, Flesh vessel. I don't know. But anyways. um, Yeah. So I was like in a tribal setting in that lifetime. And I had three kids. And I was living in like a hut. And I remember looking at my husband then. And just he was like a warrior. And I remember looking at him and having no emotional attachment to him. Mm-hmm. And it it's like these past lives tell us things that we don't necessarily w- always want to know, but need to know. And seeing those things really helped wake me up. Right. And you know what? In this life. This reminds me of people might be able to relate to this when you are watching a movie or a TV show and you get so like sucked into it and you are so emotionally connected with these characters and you at the end of the show or the movie, you have learned so much by connecting with these, even if they're fictional, by connecting with these individuals because you were understanding their story and what that means and it's almost like taking that concept when you go into these past life regressions because there's always going to be that argument from skeptics that think like well what if it wasn't you what if it was just something else well it doesn't matter if it was something else you are able to put yourself in this perspective in the shoes of this individual and go through what they went through to absorb that greater message and that of that story that was told from their lifetime and be able to bring that to you now so I throw that bone out to anybody that's skeptical whether or not it is a past life or if it's you just recalling some else's experience it doesn't matter you are growing and expanding by accepting the story and their emotions and their feelings as a part of you I totally get what you're saying something I've really been considering lately is the way that other people like in this lifetime are or I guess in other lifetimes too other people are our mirrors and whenever something and someone else triggers us, it's a mirror back to us asking, what is this reflecting within me that needs to be healed? And maybe it's reflecting something that I thought I moved past, but I haven't made peace with yet. What is this person mirroring that I can learn from? Because there's always something that we can learn from every single person that we meet. Oh, yeah. Um. So what are some things that you've been able to release during past life regression? Ooh, 
let's let's go for the biggest ones because I know it's a lot. Yeah, (laughs) we've had a lot of conversations about this. Right. Well, and so basically, I'll explain how after I did my first session with Patricia, I was able to remember everything when it was all done. I was not asleep or in the dark when the whole thing happened. I remembered everything. So after it was all said and done and I go back to my normal life, my normal patterns, I'm still thinking on it. I'm still trying to make sense of what it was I saw and expand on that and get uh, bits and pieces put together because it's not like I saw the entirety every single second of that lifetime. It's like I saw the big moments like in different sections and led up to the next section and then ultimately all the way up to my death scene it's like we kind of fast forward through some things just to get the the critical bits and pieces so when I'm at home just thinking on it I'm trying to fill in the gaps as to okay well why did I find myself there or why did I find myself with this person or what was this I was feeling or what I'm trying to make sense of it all and I'm I'm filling in the gaps and I'm also using the verbiage that Patricia used at the time because I'm remembering okay she did this countdown uh to deepen your state of relaxation and I would apply that to my meditations at home and found myself going into deeper meditations than I had prior to that and then I was able to go even further into more past lives and on my own I got to discover past life after past life, like beyond the ones that I had only just saw in my first session with Patricia. And I got to, every time I discovered something new, I was learning more about myself. So my first two past lives that I uncovered with Patricia was one, the first one, I was in like the 1820s. This uh, and I was, it started off look, looking at myself like I was in my late teens, like maybe 19 or something like that. And expanding on that, going to the next scene where I'm getting married, going to the next scene where I'm having kids, going to my lifetime as an adult and into my elderly years and then on my death scene. And then I'm transitioning be, into this really relaxed uh, state and I, I like to use this reference because she used this uh, garden like imagine yourself being in this garden and it's a beautiful garden and I love using that whenever I do past life regressions with my clients as is um, but in there I discovered my uh, I refer to it as a spirit guide in that space I was able to communicate with my spirit guide And whenever I had questions about what I just seen, she was there to answer them for me or expand upon that. And that was kind of the biggest things for me because I could see whatever I saw, but I had a spiritual guide to answer things more in depth and become more clear on things. And that was like the most mind blowing thing for me. Um, to be able to communicate with a spiritual being beyond the physical form. And she had been such a, a, va- a vital uh, reference point for so long. And I didn't even realize it. Like when I was younger, even, I remember having these random conversations with, with a voice in my head, but I'm not thinking I'm crazy or anything. But then when I discovered it's my spirit guide, I'm like, you're the one I've been talking to this whole time. Oh, my gosh. But I think beyond the past life regressions, like I'm learning emotional lessons from each past life that I recall. Um, And again, I can go that there's so, so many. It's hard for me to bring up one. I know. um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm trying to just pinpoint it and I'm going all over the place in my head. I think the most valuable things though I learned were the ones that my spirit guide was able to tell me based upon my past lives. Like this all connects because we are all one. Um, We are all in this together. We are all part of a a stream that's just uh, coming off of an ocean 
everything comes together out of love, even when there is pain, even when there is hurt. That is because there is this separation that we are having from other individuals or the the fact that we believe we are an individual separate from source, from the universe, from God, whatever right, you want to call right. it. So what about things that you've been able to release? Like something that you maybe were holding on to in this life and then you saw it mirrored in a past life and you thought, oh, I don't have to carry that anymore. Okay. So uh, the 1920s, <laughs> uh, that came up in a past life. Uh, vision for me where I saw myself living in the Dust Bowl of uh, Illinois and we were dirt dirt poor and eventually I ran away from home escaped with some folks that I knew from my town that were moving to Chicago and when we went to Chicago I got into the illegal underground speakeasy scenes and met a mob boss who I ended up dating, but he ended up being abusive and killed me. And the biggest thing I was able to release by seeing that was that I recognized who that mob boss was in connection to a relationship I had in this lifetime. Now, my the listeners might remember the, or have heard, know that I have a son. He's five now, my son, Edward. He is the light of my life. He is everything to me. And his father and I, when we were together, it was not the healthiest relationship by no means. It wasn't a long relationship either. It went kind of fast. I think we were only together for a total, like maybe less than a year um, because I found out I was pregnant. Like, I think nearly two months into our relationship and then I wow. left him yeah I I left him when Edward was only three months old so wow. that took a lot of courage Laura thank you thank you it was me finally standing up for myself and protecting myself because the that was and at the time mind you when I was going through this relationship uh and that whole thing this lifetime um I still was not in the spectrum of understanding past lives or believing in past lives. That didn't come till later. Um, like when Edward was like two years old, I was getting into it all. But my child's father in this lifetime was the mob boss in that lifetime. And everything made so much sense to me when I realized that because he was not physically abusive to me in this lifetime, but he was emotionally mentally verbally abusive and gaslighting me and it was not a healthy relationship by no means but it was made so much sense when i'm like oh my god he's carrying so much of that over from the past life relationship we had then in that lifetime he was extremely abusive physically abusive and i was making up all these excuses in that lifetime i remember hearing my voice with that chicago accent like oh you know it's just it's just i i made him upset it's my fault i shouldn't have said this he didn't mean it and making up all these excuses not owning that this is not the way i wanted to be treated in that lifetime i didn't know that and how he ended up killing me because we were in, there was so much illegal activity in that lifetime, right? Um, I rem we were in his apartment flat that w that we lived in, right above the speakeasy, and I I recall being on one of those uh, lounge chairs, uh, and I was lighting up a cigarette attached to one of those long, skinny little stick pipe things, whatever you call them, and <laughs> I don't <laughs> and he was at this vanity table and I think he just like snorted a line of coke and then in a fit of rage after that he just turns over to me and he yells at me and he's like you know I fucking hate it when you smoke those cigarettes in the apartment and he comes over to me and starts beating me to death but and then in that whole time that he's beating me I'm just in my head like why did I do that why did I if I had only done something different, I could have avoided this. And then ultimately, I was blaming myself the whole time. And then ultimately, he pulls out a gun and shoots me point blank in the head. 
And that was it. And me being able to go back and remember that I was in that victim mode mentality. Well, not even. I was in the self-blame mentality. Mm-hmm. I was blaming myself for all the of the misfortune I had. All the difficulties and pain that I was it was me. It was my fault. It was something wrong that I did. And yeah. I remember thinking those similar thoughts the whole time I was actually with him in this lifetime. It was like I was trying to make things better. I was trying to right wrongs and thinking I had the power to change that. And it took so much for me to finally realize, like, I cannot change this man. I cannot fix this man. It is not. You fix anybody. You can't change no. anybody. But that was such a critical thing that I had to learn by going through it now and finally yeah. choosing to change that because that changed everything for me. When I finally got myself out of that mentality of realizing, oh, it's not my fault. It's just me trying to right the wrongs of a past life. Uh, it took so long for me to come to that conclusion later on. But like ultimately that healed so much because even after I left my child's father in this lifetime for a while after I was so confused as to like, why did I even get myself into that relationship? How did I put myself in that position? Why did like that part was the most baffling of it all for me afterwards, because I'm like, I had self-respect. I thought I was a smart person. I thought I was, I was valuable and good. So how did I get into that situation being with a person like that in getting into those thoughts and thinking that I was not good enough, thinking that I was dumb, thinking that I couldn't, I was not worthy enough. So I have to try to appease this one person who seemingly loves me and has sees value in me. How do I prove myself? And so none of that made sense to me until I finally just uh, uncovered the 1920s lifetime. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it was just repeating those patterns with this individual. Oh my God. I feel the need to say this while we're talking about all of this, but if anybody is listening to this and there's anybody you're if you're in a situation where you are being treated unfairly and you're making excuses for the other person, please don't be afraid to reach out and contact somebody um anybody <laughs> honestly like you don't have to stay in that situation and the universe wants better for you than that um so Laura as far as being able to see your past life where like you experienced your death in the past life regression I think a lot of people might hear that and be kind of scared of past life regression but I remember when I did mine and I saw one of my past lives or when you walked me through the past life regression and I saw one of my past lives where I um saw the end of that lifetime happen I didn't feel any pain Mm -hmm. so let's maybe talk about how that works a little bit so people aren't scared off (laughs) (laughs) right well yes so when you recall your death in past lives there is no pain people are so afraid of uh i think people in general are afraid of the idea of past lives because they're afraid of re-experiencing pain but that is not the case when you are recalling anything um basically you're in this space of the subconscious mind, which is separate from the conscious mind, um, because the subconscious mind houses everything you've ever experienced, every anything you've ever remembered, but it does not negate from your current experience of reality. So when we're in the subconscious mind, we're n- it does not take away from our physical experience, but that's the thing. Our physical bodies feel, uh, feel pain, feel hurt, but our subconscious mind is in a different spectrum. It's in a different ways. Like, yes, there is emotional pain, but it's not the same. And that one's kind of tricky to explaining without, if you don't, if you haven't gone through it yourself. But ultimately, when you recall your past lives and you're going through the death scene, it's like your, your, your mind 
separate from the pain is recalling the experience. So let's say when I died, it's like my soul is leaving my body and I'm in the conscious awareness space of that soul, not the physical pain of the body. So that is leaving the body and you can kind of in the session, look down at the scene below you, look at down at your body, look down at who's around you. And you're in the frame of kind of like a ghost, (laughs) kind of like you're, you're in a higher perspective so that the pain is not carrying forward. You understand what the emotional pain was. Understanding is not the same as feeling or re-experiencing it. So you're carrying the information you learned from that lifetime with you as you are leaving your body. But you, again, there is no pain. It's just understanding and seeing that lifetime in its entirety. And that released so much fear of death for me. And because I think a lot of my pursuits in the past, like even when I would do ghost hunting was like trying to understand death so that I can be as prepared as possible when it comes for me because it's going to come for all of us. Right. So a lot of people do that. That's I think personally, I think that's the basis of a lot of religions is like the how to be prepared. (laughs) Right. Like what happens after we die and how can I best prepare for that? Right. Because people don't want to do the wrong thing and make it worse for them. And I want to clarify that. I don't think anybody can make things worse for themselves. That's not a thing. That is, that is pain that we bring to ourselves in this lifetime. I don't think there's, there is no pain on the other side. And it's just about learning and expanding on what we can find what we can find out in our lifetimes now yeah. and that's the thing if this is the only lifetime we can experience pain and hurt even that has value because now we're learning things from going through the pain going through uh, the hurt that we wouldn't be able to learn in other dimensions and other frequencies or other realms So uh, there is a choice that when we come into this lifetime that we are choosing to go through the types of experiences that might cause pain, that might cause us hurt, but in order for our souls to expand and grow. Yeah. The way I can explain, like, seeing your death in a past life like for me personally it felt like watching a movie where I was really attached to the main character right like I felt all of the emotions of it and then they just like passed Mm -hmm. but I didn't feel any physical pain or anything like that I wasn't like re-traumatized or anything by seeing it it just kind of right happened like a movie right you can get into an objective mind space when you're recalling your past lives or your deaths i think that's the other thing is being in that objective space is like you're seeing it but you're not the re-traumatization is not there because you're in that objective mind space of understanding like okay i'm not going through that now so it doesn't hurt me yeah so we have a couple of questions from our audience who asked us these questions over in the Vivid Vibes Tribe Facebook group. So if you want to ask us any questions in future episodes, go ahead and join the Vivid Vibes Tribe Facebook group and you can ask us questions for future episodes. So the first one is how common is it to meet someone from a past life in this life and you recognize them? Well, that's almost... I'm going to look at that as two parts of a question because I believe everyone you meet in this lifetime, you have met in some way in a past lifetime. We travel in soul groups or soul circles so that we're all kind of in agreement when we incarnate into a lifetime that we're going to meet again in this lifetime or in certain situations when the timing's right. You know, that kind of situation I think happens with everybody that you know 
an individual may know this person, even if it's somebody like as simple as you go to a kiosk and you're ordering a drink or something and the guy over the counter you've never met before, but he's handing you your order, like you probably have known him in some way in a past life. Just it was minor then, it's minor now. The energetic pool that we have to individuals we resonate with kind of dictates, well, not dictates, that's too strong of words. It kind of shows up in terms of how strong of a bond or a relationship we have with other people in our life. Like Nat can show how strong of a bond we've had previously with them in other lifetimes. And as for recognizing that, not always, (laughs) that doesn't always happen. (laughs) We don't always recognize that. When you do recognize it, it's beautiful because it makes things make sense so much because, and then uh, there are people that, you know, like you've just met them and you have this super deep connection and like everything you guys talk about is just like on point like oh my gosh you have this strong bond off the bat that to me is a sign of a past life connection that was on a deeper level now it's not going to be the same exact relationship as it used to be in this aren't in incarnation if it was like we wouldn't be learning we're meant to change roles from lifetime to lifetime because um like for example my first past life regression that uh, when i saw myself in the 1820s i saw my children that i had in that lifetime i had my oldest son named bobby in that lifetime i recognize as my mom in this lifetime it's a very different role wow and my husband in that lifetime, his name was Henry, is my son in this lifetime. So their roles are very different and definitely not the same. But I recognize that and understand that's why I feel the strong connection. Now, we can recognize a, a connection we have with someone, maybe if we're trying to find that in a romantic partner, it's not necessarily going to be the same. Because... I even had that happen to me where I made this strong connection with somebody that I worked with (laughs) and it finally occurred to me. I was like so confused at the time is like, why is or why am I feeling all this stuff? What's coming up? Like this doesn't make sense because it's not that way. Why? Why? And eventually I uncovered the fact that that person used to be a husband of mine (laughs) in a past life. And I'm like, oh, but that's not what it is now. That's not what it's going to be now. Right. I recognize that at the same time. So we can get confused in relationships a lot um, because we ourselves don't understand what our soul is telling us in terms of it's recognizing something that was and it feels that connection like it used to be. But that's not what it is now because we're meant to grow beyond that. We're not meant to be stuck So we have to kind of face how like, okay, that's what it used to be, but that's not the same as what it's going to be for us now. We just have to kind of learn how to go beyond that. Yeah. And I have a question kind of in regards to that and recognizing someone from a past life. So what if there's a person who doesn't necessarily have a, uh, like a common look like they're a unique looking person and they often get oh you look like my sister or you look like my cousin or you look like this person or you look like that person is there a possibility that that person could have just showed up in a lot of people's past lives like maybe they were in a person like a I don't know like a (laughs) famous person or something like that in a past life so a lot of people recognize them in this life um that's kind of hard to say I think it's subjective um because I'm trying to put my head in the perspective of that individual that gets that a lot I get that a lot I guess I should have just said that but literally (laughs) all the time 
I, like people will tell me like, oh, you look like my cousin or, or do you have a sister or and I don't know if it's because I'm a redhead and people think we all look the same <laughs> or <laughs> or if like they have just seen me before in a past life because having that past life where I was royalty in another country like maybe that would make sense but I don't know it could just be something about my face that people are like oh you have red hair you must be related to this other redhead well I think that it's a complex question because I think there's multiple facets to that and what might make sense with that because yes there is that possibility that you know you reached a lot of people's lives and so when they show up in this incarnation there's going to be a lot of them Um, You're going to have a lot of ties with a lot of different souls and in some way they are recognizing you, hence why they are in your reality bubble to begin with, um, part of your soul circle. And but then the other aspect of that, when I think on a here and now type of thing is like on a psychological level, they're trying to connect with you because there is something interesting about you, whether they they don't necessarily know what that is. They're grasping at straws. Basically when they say, Oh, you remind me of this, or you remind me of that. It's like, they know there's something that they're drawn to about you and they're trying to connect with you. So therefore that's the first thing that like pops in their head. Oh, it must be because she reminds me of this person. Oh, like, so they're, they're trying to connect with you, but they might not know what that is. That makes sense. I think a lot of people do that. Like they'll tell you, oh, you look like this celebrity because they just like. They want to connect and they. Right. A lot of people do that. Yeah. (laughs) Like, oh, like people will tell me I look like Emma Stone. I'm like, girl, I do not look anything like Emma Stone. Stop. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But I think that's Um, the thing. Or like someone told me Lindsay Lohan before. I was like, oh, Lindsay bye. Lohan? What? No. I literally look nothing like Lindsay no, Lohan. No, you don't. At all. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of goes both ways too, though. Because when someone tells me that, like, oh, you look like my friend or you look like my cousin, it invokes this feeling of, like, familiarity in them for me like what I was talking about with the mirror thing before like a piece of my soul knows a piece of their soul and maybe it is just that ultimate reminder deep down that we really are all cut from the same fabric we really are Mm -hmm. all part of this ocean of energy and whenever we even make that small effort to connect it's a reminder that we are all drops in the same ocean you know yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so another one of our Vivid Vibes tribe members asked a really complex question. So I'm going to say it and you can break it down in any way that you want. Okay. <laughs> but she said, do all souls on this plane have a past life from 3D slash 5D Earth? So I guess from this dimension. Or do some come here from other planes without that karmic pattern? If that, if so, then would that be a part of their past life regression? So I guess what she's asking is, do all souls come from this reality that we're experiencing on this earth? Or do some come from other dimensions without the karmic pattern of this dimension? Ooh, Ooh, that's a loaded one. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So I, I kind of want to start by addressing the dimensional thing. Cause I don't know how many of our listeners believe that or into that or understand that. Um, essentially. So we're in the 3d reality here. Then when you go beyond that fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth dimensions. So it's almost like, it's almost like the fourth, fifth dimension kind of are like ghost realms, almost, with these spirits about them. And there are ghosts that can interact with the 3D world because they're kind of close to that. Um, but then as you go to higher, like beyond that, uh, the higher dimensions are higher frequency beings, light light beings, um, spirit guides, uh other spiritual masters and things of that um 
and non-human entities and uh, interdimensional beings and creatures. It's there's so much beyond what we can comprehend just because we are in our our dimension. We have laws and uh, like physical quantum laws that define how we interact in the physical dimension. So us understanding those laws as they are for us here to go into other dimensions, it becomes more complex, complex because those beings are no longer, uh, they, they are not restrained by the laws we are restrained by. They are beyond that. They go beyond that. And they understand more than what we know too in so many aspects. But at the same time, we understand things that they don't know because we're in the physical form that can learn, that can grow. Because when you are outside of a physical body, you're kind of limited. There is no growth. Everything is, it just is. And so the reason why we might choose to come into the physical form, again, is to learn how to grow, to learn lessons that we wouldn't learn otherwise without the physical form. Because again, if you are just are being in this state of no pain, of no physical body, no form, there is, you are kind of limited in that spectrum on what you can there's a greater understanding, but then we choose to incarnate in a physical form to increase that understanding even more because this is the dimension in which we can create, in which we can grow. Ooh. And I know there's... <laughs> She's like, <not a> woo. <laughs> this, it, like, oh, there's so much on that because there is so much out there. And yeah. there's even... Like, okay, so there are species, even, like, ooh, alien species, okay, that, like, are interdimensional beings in their own way that are kind of looking out for us. But even they have a different understanding than we do in, in knowing how we choose to incarnate. And they might have that choice to incarnate onto Earth if we want. And the thing is, we are here on planet Earth because of the vibrational frequency that is here right now as it is. And it is simply because, yes, we want to grow. We want to expand. We want to create. And that this is where we're able to do that. So a being might choose whether or not they are from this Earth plane to come to this Earth plane because they want to expand on that. Um, so going back to trying to answer that question, no, not all souls have to come from earth to be incarnated on earth, but a lot of them, we've been here for a long time because our work isn't done. Time is, we measure time as a physical being, as being like this linear thing from start to end, but beyond this time is eternal there the, or i mean there is no time there is no real sense of time there time is not linear so even though we might think thousands and millions of years who knows what like that's not uh what our souls or higher dimensional beings are looking at they're not looking at how much time it takes to learn something we have endless time so we might have many 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 incarnations of life because again everything is eternal so there is no there is no end to learning and growing and wanting to find out more so that ultimately the universe god and everything in that can expand there is no start and there is no finish to that it is always going on it's always perpetual and so so something can come from another dimension to this dimension without the karmic pattern of this dimension? Right. Well, yes. Karma happens because of what we have experienced and what we are learning and how that reflects. But ultimately, it ties in a lot more to the law of attraction because anything you, yes, anything you put <laughs> out there energetically comes back to you or is mirrored to you. And so it's like you have a bunch of different filing cards in this stack of papers from every filing card is an experience is a 
karmic vibration, so to speak. So that, you know, you're going to find copies of that, or it's going to come back to you in some way, but there's a lot there when you have past life after past life or whatever incarnations, you're going to have a lot of things that have accumulated to your knowledge of that, of what, you know, even subconsciously to now where you are now. So a lot of these factors are influencing you in ways that you're not sure of or don't know about fully again, subconsciously. Right. And then Um, the past life regression kind of helps you just, remember and clarify it oh that oh now i've learned this so now i can remove that and then you heal that and you keep on going now there's there's a lot of work to that i mean that's not as easy feat for someone to be able to remember and understand and fully grasp this new concept because apparently even oh sorry sorry (laughs) that's where someone like you comes in to help them kind of navigate those past lives yeah. Yeah, because it takes an objective outsider standpoint to kind of influence or not in a not in a way where I'm n- manipulating, but being that outsider to tell like if you are getting overwhelmed by an emotion, we see what the past life is that's connected to that overwhelming feeling and then I can be there as the guide to say like, "Oh, well, you know, that's felt overwhelming to you then" because it led to your demise but you that is not what you are going through now right like I remember yeah sorry I remember when we did the past life regression where I um was royalty and I was being married off by my father and like in that past life I did not want that and literally I cried the entire time we did this past life regression and it was it wasn't like sad tears it was just like I was releasing stuff that I didn't even know I was holding on to Mm -hmm. and I'm a Pisces moon I cry a lot anyways but um (laughs) (laughs) that's just who I am but (laughs) um no I did not want that I did not want to be married And I just wanted to travel and I couldn't because I was trapped. And I remember being like sitting up on this um, balcony terrace thing, like as almost like a stage, like I was being presented to the people. And I just ran off and a guard caught me and threw me in my room and um, in this past life. And uh I my past self princess was like crying in this big canopy bed and then at that point you asked me something about like if if I now could tell myself anything it's so (laughs) difficult to explain if this version of myself in this plane could say anything to that version of myself in my past life what would I say and I feel like you guiding me to say that helped me heal that part of myself so past life regressions are something that you can experience by yourself in in like the uh, comfort of your own home right in exactly in uh not hypnotic states, but, um, self-induced meditations. Yeah. Like self-induced meditation. Literally I've done them just laying in my bed in Savasana, uh, before I even knew Laura and, (laughs) (laughs) and they are something that you can do by yourself, but having someone else like you, Laura, to ask me questions really helped me heal some of that karma some of those patterns right well our minds naturally i say this to a lot of people when i'm talking when i'm trying to explain it where our minds naturally wander and when we find ourselves in the we get pulled by certain emotional frequencies so when you find yourself in that memory feeling the strong emotion you're pulled to that that's what you're focusing on so having a guide there um like when i'm there i'm there to not have you just and only focus on that strong pull 
now I'm taking you into a, a different perspective to still be able to look at it objectively. And again, you're beyond the normal limits of time and space. So you can do that where like, look at yourself now and look at your past self and be, have them in the same space, interact with each other, because now you have learned and grown beyond what that version of you knew at that time. You can bring your knowledge and understanding that you have now to that individual that you used to be to heal those old wounds. Because again, you are beyond the limits of time. So healing by bringing forward what you know now, it's almost like time travel. You are healing the past versions of yourself to create this more whole and peaceful version of you altogether. Absolutely. Well, I think we got pretty (laughs) in-depth about past lives. I hope that gives you guys a clearer understanding of past lives. And if any of you guys want to try past life regression, Laura, do you do remote past life regressions? That's one I'm trying to figure out because I really want to. I've gotten that question a lot. Um, It's kind of tricky when I'm not there in front of them. Because if you, your eyes are closed and you're no longer paying attention to a camera, (laughs) it can make uh, for some interesting things that I might not hear you if your mic, you know, there's stuff to go, go through that. So I'm trying to work out all that to see what I can come up with. And, but I do remote tarot readings and those offer a lot of in-depth information as well until all this, uh, quarantine stuff is over with for now at yeah least. but you will be doing a workshop in the vivid vibes tribe right yes i'm working All on right. that yes that's happening so if you guys want to be a part of that workshop again for the millionth time <laughs> <laughs> hop over to facebook and just search vivid vibes tribe and our facebook group will come up um If you join the group, you'll get exclusive content, workshops, and we will also have polls that will ask you what you guys would like to hear in the future and invite you to ask questions and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for listening today, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, please hop over to the Apple Podcasts or iTunes store and write us a review. We would love that so much. And I hope you guys have a great day. Namaste. Namaste.